So there you can see how much I love art. And again, like I said before, I'm an artist at heart. So check this out. everyone welcome back to day six of vlogmas today is december 6 2017 and i can't wait to share with you what i have planned to do with my students today so right now is my lunch time and i didn't vlog during my planning time because i was talking to some other teachers in my grade level but i want to show you something that i did when i was getting the students um, ready to line up for lunch as they were lining up and i was calling the groups i started doodling on the document camera so i just want to show you quickly what i was doodling so there you can see how much I love art. And again, like I said before, I'm an artist at heart. So check this so out. So on the document camera, which is right over there, I started doodling this and I just started doodling different things. I started with hello and then I started with the little characters there and giving them all these different kind of little faces. And here it is how it looks on the document camera and how it was projected on the board as the students were lining up. Another thing that we were going over today in our reading, which was kind of impromptu, I know we're going over cause and effect, but we were looking at a science fiction story. So I decided to quickly show the kids about the story arch, how stories have an introduction where they introduce the characters and the setting and the problem or something related to the problem. And then they have the rising action, which builds suspense. And then that leads us to the climax, which is turning point where the character needs to make a decision. And then the falling action, followed by the conclusion or ending, which has the resolution. And I went ahead and I followed this up with the vocabulary video for plot elements, which I'll link in the description box below. And I wanted to quickly show you the video that I mentioned that I showed the students on vocabulary, which is under reading and writing um, in vocabulary. So if you scroll all the way down right here, it's plot elements. And this is the video that pretty much shows them uh, the story arch like I showed on the board. Let me just play a little bit. A plot's not anything but a sequence of events. And every story has a plot, because a story without a plot is like a fish out of water. Or like pancakes without syrup. Or like a shoe without some laces. You wouldn't wear shoes without laces, would you? Would you? You got a story to tell, you gotta have a plot If it doesn't, am I listening? Um, no I'm not First, introduce the conflict and characters Then the action rises, it may get scary And the climax is when things go nuts The action falls away, then we wrap it up Yup, yup, that's the conclusion Make your plot hot and yeah. you never so that is basically the same thing like I show them. So I show them, you see how this is a story arch. So we have the introduction, which is the beginning of the story where all the characters are introduced, the setting and part of the problem. Then we have the rising action followed by the climax, which is a turning point. And then it's the falling action followed by, by the conclusion, which includes the resolution. So that is what I use today um, with my students just for a quick review. And later on, I'll do more activities with it. I even have a graphic organizer that I created, which I'll show you in a second, that I am planning on using with my students sometime next week when we are working on a narrative so that they can plot the different story elements into the story arch. So let me show you that right now. So here's that story arch that I was talking about earlier that I am planning on using with my students pretty soon um, the next time we are focusing on a narrative story. So basically they put the title here and then they, it starts out with the introduction. So they name what the characters are, the time, the setting, the setting is the when and the where. I'm going to pretty much change this a little bit around, um, put the setting, put the problem here. 
And these are the lines that I provide so that the students can write the sequence of events in the order as it starts to rise the action. So that's another thing that I'm going to update. I'm going to put rising action right here. And here is the climax. So what is the turning point or new information that's introduced? And that leads us to the falling action, which I'm also going to label and update. And I'll show you in a moment because I can do that pretty quickly. And here's the conclusion, which is the resolution, how the problem was solved. So that's basically um, how I'm connecting this so that the students know the different parts of the story and how it just builds and then it goes down. And we'll practice this with similar stories that they know so that they have more or less an idea of how this can be applied to different narrative stories that they read. Okay, so I just updated the file and I took narrative story arch out and I just left story arch so they can just write the title of the story here. And I added the rising action with the arrow going up and the falling action with the arrow going down. I also made some changes here. I added some lines so the students can write their character setting and problem. I changed this around too. And I added some lines for the students to write the conclusion of the story. So, yep, this is what I'm planning on using with my students so that we can go over the different parts of the story structure on the next narrative that we read. And now it's time for lunch. And today I have ground turkey breast with a salad. This is just Organic Girls 50-50 mix of spring mix and baby spinach with a little bit of the balsamic, um, not balsamic, with a little bit of Bragg's pomegranate vinaigrette. This whole lunch is about one or two points because of the dressing and the olive oil that was used to cook the chicken breast. So that's lunch and I'm going to eat it up. And the things that I did start with my homeroom that I'm going to also do with my other class tomorrow is I wanted to start focusing on growth mindset and mindfulness. And I love how Class Dojo has all these big idea videos and they all have different topics. So the first one was growth mindset. Then they released the perseverance ones and the empathy, gratitude. The newest one is mindfulness. So I'm like, oh my God, perfect. So I'm going to start by showing the students the growth mindset videos and doing the activities that come with those. So there's five videos these videos in this series are five minutes each and they have different activities. What I like about the videos is that you can have the students watch it and then they have discussion questions right here on Dojo that you can discuss after the video. The students can then go back and focus on maybe completing some of the activities that Dojo provides here for the teachers. Now my plan is to finish off the growth mindset one and then focus on the mindfulness series. Uh, now, the mindfulness, they're different minutes. So the first one is five minutes. The second one is 20 minutes, which I believe it has an activity that the students go ahead and do. Yeah, this is an activity. So draw your beast. So you go through it and do the activity. So it takes about 20 minutes as a class lesson to do. And then there's this one that talks about breathing, which is 10 minutes, and mindful movements, which is 10 minutes. So I'm looking forward to implementing these videos along with the essential oils diffuser that I said I was going to purchase and some of the mindfulness music. So, yep, yeah, I'll keep you posted on how this goes. There's something that I forgot to show you yesterday when I was going over the data trackers, but underneath this yellow sheet, this is where I have the students analyze their data. So they're basically looking at their data, looking at what the data tells them, what they're good at, what they need to work on. And they developed their goal. And I know I talked about yesterday about the SMART goal, but that's what the SMART goal is used for, to make their SMART goal here and then what their action plan will be. What are they going to do to achieve that goal? And who's going to help them? And how will they know that they're successful? So they've already done this for the iReady AP1. They did this for the Wonders Assessments where they looked at their three tests that they've taken so far this year and they reflected on their data. And the students that finished their iReady AP2 went ahead and did it on their iReady recent scores. So they created a new goal and created an action plan to meet that goal. So this is the reflection sheet, how they analyze their data. I don't do this every time they take a test, but I do have them complete it after the iReady diagnostic test. And I have them completed about at least once a grading period for their wonders assessment. So that's basically how I have my students analyze their data. And that's all I have for today. I am feeling a little sleepy. I think I'm getting worse. And it's probably because I forgot to take my Zycam today and my emergency. 
So hopefully some rest will make me feel better. I still have tomorrow and Friday to get through. And on Saturday, I have big plans. So I hope I am feeling better by then. So I'm going to end the vlog here. I am in school. It's about 5, 10 p.m. right now. My students are in a holiday concert tonight, which starts at 6. And I can't wait to see them perform. So yeah, that's all I have for today. And I hope that you will come back tomorrow for Vlogmas Day 7. I'm really looking forward to filming these videos and sharing them with you. And remember, this is only up until December 25th that I'm doing my daily vlogs. And then after that, I'll just post regularly once a week on a regular day. Uh, I can't, I haven't decided which day that will be, but I know that I will be posting once a week after December 25th. So please, if you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button, leave a comment down below. If you're new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications so you don't miss a future video. And I hope that you all have a beautiful day. Don't forget to smile.